So what exactly do we mean when we say that a salt is soluble in water? Usually what we mean here is that a solid salt can dissociate into its ions in aqueous solution. Take calcium sulfate for example. We could write a net ionic chemical equation to indicate this like so. This is, in fact, an equilibrium, meaning that not 100% of the solid calcium sulfate will dissociate into its ions. So solubility is really a continuous property, and some salts can be more soluble than others. This solubility can be measured if we could measure the concentration of one or more of the ions that are supposed to be created. This is related to the equilibrium constant for this process, which, because it's a dissolution process, is known as a solubility product constant, with an SP as a subscript. So the KSP value is actually a numerical measure of the solubility of a salt. This is the purpose of today's lab, to experimentally measure the KSP for calcium sulfate. To do so, we're going to use an ion exchange column. Inside this column is a resin that contains an organic polymer containing acidic hydrogens. It turns out that these hydrogens are readily displaced by calcium ions. What that means is that, as calcium ions pass over the resin, they displace the hydrogen atoms and adhere to the polymer. The hydrogen ions are then allowed to flow out of the column. So, calcium ions in, hydrogen ions out. And since calcium ions have a 2 plus charge, two hydrogen ions come out for every one calcium ion that goes in. Now, we are really good at measuring the concentration of H plus ions via a pH titration. So if we measure the concentration of H plus ions, we can work out the concentration of calcium ions, which must be equal to the concentration of sulfate ions, which allows us to calculate the solubility product constant, which is the purpose of today's lab. To start, collect 20 mils of the 1 molar sodium hydroxide solution in a clean, dry 50 mil beaker. Then pipette a 5 mil aliquot of that solution into a 250 mil volumetric flask and fill it up to the mark with deionized water. Be sure to mix thoroughly. You'll use this solution later when determining the hydrogen ion concentration in your sample. A saturated solution of calcium sulfate is available for you in the lab. Collect about 50 mils of it in a clean, dry 100 mil beaker. Then filter the calcium sulfate solution into a 250 mil Erlenmeyer flask using fluted filter paper, which you can make like this. Now just stopper the flask. An ion exchange column should already be available and attached to your stand using a burette clamp. Remove the cover from the column. Place a 250 mil beaker underneath the column and gently pour about 10 mils of 4 molar hydrochloric acid onto the column to activate the ion exchange resin. Allow the solution to run slowly onto the column at a rate of about one drop per second, allowing the liquid level to drop just above the level of the resin. When that's done, wash the excess acid off the column with 200 mils of deionized water by adding it slowly to the top of the column and allowing it to drain until just above the level of the resin. In order to check that you've prepared the column properly, wash it again with another 4 mils or so of deionized water, and check the acidity level by using blue litmus paper to check the drops from the bottom of the column. The blue litmus will turn red in the presence of acid, but we want to keep all of our acid within the column, so keep washing with deionized water and checking with the blue litmus paper until a strip of paper remains blue. That way we can be sure that all of the remaining acid is bound to the inside of the column. Now that everything is set, we're ready to begin, so place a clean 250 mil Erlenmeyer flask beneath the column. Pipette 10 mils of your saturated calcium sulfate solution slowly onto the column. Collect it in your Erlenmeyer flask at a rate of about one drop per second. After that, you'll just need to wash out any remaining unbound ions, so collect three washes of about 10 mils each of deionized water in your Erlenmeyer flask. Check the last drop of the third wash with the blue litmus paper. If the paper remains blue, you're good to go to proceed to the next step. Otherwise, you'll need to wash with another 10 mils. Now, just a precautionary note, do not let the liquid level drop below the resin. It should always stay above the resin. Now you're ready to perform a titration to determine the concentration of hydrogen ions in your solution. 
Rinse your burette with the diluted sodium hydroxide solution from your volumetric flask that you made in step one. Then fill the burette close to the zero mil mark. Place three drops of methyl purple in your acid solution that you collected from the ion exchange column. Then titrate the solution containing the three drops of methyl purple until the end point is reached. You'll know you've reached the end point when the solution stays green for 30 seconds with swirling. As always, note the volume from your burette when this happens. Now repeat the procedure starting from when you activated the ion exchange column with the hydrochloric acid until two separate titrations are both within 0.1 mils of each other. When you're all finished that, we'll reset the column again using hydrochloric acid. Take 10 mils of the 4 molar hydrochloric acid and pour it onto the column and allow it to drip through the column at a rate of one drop per second. Repeat this once more and finally, add 5 mils of the 4 molar hydrochloric acid to the column, close the stopcock, and put the cover back on. Using your initial and final burette readings, you can determine the total volume of NaOH, or sodium hydroxide, that you used. Since we know the concentration of the sodium hydroxide, we can multiply concentration by volume to get the total moles of sodium hydroxide we used from the burette. This must be exactly equal to the moles of hydrogen ions we had. Now, since one calcium ion displaces two hydrogen ions, the number of calcium ions in your original solution must be exactly half of the number of moles of H+. Since these resulted from pipetting 10 mils of the saturated solution, we can divide the number of moles by our volume, which is 0 0.010 liters and that will give us our final concentration of calcium ions. According to the net ionic equation for the solubility of calcium sulfate, there should be an equal number of moles of calcium ions and sulfate ions. So squaring your final concentration will yield the final KSP value, and you're done.